Hello and welcome to episode 24 on the Haxton Knits channel. My name is Deanna and if this is your first time here, I am so glad you decided to join me today. I am an American and I live in Okinawa, Japan. This is not my permanent home, but I have lived here for five years now. Um, and if you are new to this channel, you will know that we are frequently and often interrupted by kittens. So hopefully you like kittens because there will be cats on this episode and every episode forever and forever and ever for the rest of time. I am super excited. I feel like I have a ton of things to show you this episode, which is weird because I um, woke up this morning with like zero plan to record and um, feeling totally unorganized. And I say this morning, it is about two o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, but I am a night shift worker. So it is bright and early on a Saturday morning and I'm trying to get this recording in before the rest of the household wakes up and starts moving around because actually as a stroke of luck, my entire household is on night shift right now. So let's get started. Somehow, I'm not sure how, but last episode I completely forgot to tell you about my last installation of the Amirisu Yarn Club. So if you guys have been watching for a few months now, you know that I've been receiving this club and I uh, signed up for it looking for um, Japanese knitters, dyers, designers that I could follow and that's because I it still kind of had a hard time reaching out to the Japanese community. I don't speak enough Japanese to like engross and immerse and get into some of these uh, local groups. I'm working on that. It's a work in progress. Um, so last installation, we received this beautiful pattern by Yuko Shimizu. Yuko Shimizu is a um, Japanese designer. She's located in Fukuoka city. And I actually saw this pattern just a couple of days before I got my yarn club up on Instagram. So they must have, you know, shipped out and then posted up the pattern. And I didn't know that it was going to be for the yarn club, but it is just a super duper cute short sleeve knitted sweater, knitted top shirt, whatever. And it's got um, an overall an, a ribbed pattern and then just a cute little slash of color work and the yarn. Ah, it's beautiful. So this is not a Japanese yarn. This is coming from Ireland and I received four skeins of Life in the Long Grass. Oh, it's beautiful. So for those of you that didn't watch some of my previous episodes, I mentioned the Amirisu Yarn Club comes with a nighttime and a daytime theme. You got to pick which one you wanted. I picked the night theme because I figured these are going to be more my colors. I think that might be obvious by the color spectrum behind me. I have all blues and greens and like no other color back there. <laughs> Except for this like spontaneous basket of all yellow, yellow, green yarn. I don't actually know how that came about. Um, anyway, so this particular yarn, it's a sport weight yarn. It's 100% superwash merino and the colorways are night sky, which is this awesome indigo dark blue and of course the great thing about hand dyed yarns is that you kind of get some variation from skein to skein and two of mine ended up somewhat brighter than the third one and I'm actually totally fine with that because it'll make a lot of interest and depth as I uh, you know kind of work these in together but these two definitely have a little more flashes of white um, <laughs> and just a little bit more depth. It looks like this particular skein got a little more saturated than their other ones. And I think that is just fine. I might even consider using it as like a, a part of a fade or something like that to help ease the color transition. And then of course the last one, this beautiful contrast color is called Starlet. It is the palest sort of lavender gray with just speckles of chartreuse and like teal blue and purple and orange and pink and you know like the whole spectrum of the rainbow and I just absolutely love this yarn. As soon as I saw it I immediately thought of several patterns that I want to knit with it which I will um, maybe slide across the screen here because I don't have all their names in front of me but there are definitely a couple of um, sort of cropped sweater t-shirt patterns that have been in my queue for a long time that came to mind right away when I opened up this skein of yarn. So 
super excited. That is it for the Amirushi Yarn Club. I will have no more Yarn Club, but that is okay because we're just in time for Advent calendars to start rolling out shortly. And I did sign up for the Sweet Georgia Advent calendar. So that is very exciting. But what's even more exciting is I received a package in my mailbox that I had totally forgotten about and let me show it to you. Party in my mailbox. Okay, if you watch their YouTube channel, that was a big spoiler and you probably already know what I'm about to show you, but I received a party in my mailbox from the Grocery Girls. Grocery Girls. I have actually received three prizes from them over, over the years of participating. So if you uh, like yarn prizes, you should probably go over there and participate, especially in their monthly sock knit alongs. They do sock talk with themes. And those are, all of my prizes have been through them. So if you knit socks in any amount, every single time you finish a sock, you should go over there and submit it to their monthly sock talk. I actually won this prize in, oh gosh, five months ago, five months ago. And I know that they sometimes get behind on mailing things out. And also I've had really, really bad mail service here in Okinawa. Uh, not the Japanese mail, actually my, my mail coming from Japan is perfectly fine, but my mail coming through the US Postal Service into Japan has been greatly delayed. So I don't know if the problem was them or me or both, but I had completely forgotten about this prize package. And man, I got a nice prize package. Part of me thinks maybe they forgot to send it out and thus I got a really nice prize package. I'm not sure, but it's really nice. So this is my bag full of goodies and let me show them to you. I always go to the yarn first. You have to go to the yarn first. This guy. Take a look at him. So this is Mud Punch Yarn, which is a brand I have never heard of before. It is Chantel, who is a dyer in Canada. And it's gorgeous. Look at this. Look at this beautiful skinny yarn. So this is apparently it, she had a club. This is the August 2019 favorite things club and the theme was Wizard of Oz. And the colorway is lions and tigers and bear. And it is a slash self striping yarn. I don't know what that means. What slash self striping yarn means. Here, I'll show you the label so you can see what I'm talking about. But I looked over on her Instagram channel and I, Instagram channel, her Instagram page and saw a lot of self-striping swatches. So I'm hoping that this will make an awesome pair of pattern socks. And it is, let me give you the specs, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 100 grams or 385 yards. Beautiful sock yarn that I am excited to find uh, the perfect pattern to knit with. I always love finding new, um, makers and designers and of course the grocery girls are in Canada so a lot of times they're sending uh, local designers to them so very excited about that but wait there's more this package has so much in it next up on the list is from Crochet Luna which is an Etsy shop I'll link it below these are little pins and what I like the best about them is that I have two so I have one to keep for myself and one to give to a friend Ah, that's my favorite thing. I love pins that come in two packs. But Crochet Luna, her site is packed full of these little pins and they are all knit, crochet, or yarn themed. And I love so many of them. Like it was everything I could do not to go order 25,000 more pins and then figure out what I'm gonna do with them. But these little guys are sloths and they say, hanging on one project at a time. And I love them so much. I um I actually have a, like a reusable grocery bag that has a sloth that looks very similar to this and it says, don't hurry, be happy. And oh yeah, sometimes I use that as a project bag. So this is actually really perfect and matches some of my aesthetic already. I'm making a lot of noises here, aren't I? Next thing on the list are stitch markers. These guys are little gorgeous wooden stitch markers. It says Handmade in Canada by Big Blue MoMA. And when you go over to her website, it says fair trade and Canadian made handcrafts with Ghanaian flair. So Ghana, I'm assuming. And uh, there is so much more on her site than just knitting things. She has 
um, like baskets and household goods, but also really beautiful project bags and obviously cute, cute, cute stitch markers. These look like little houses and maybe a little hat or bird. Uh, gosh, super adorable. And I am a sucker for stitch markers, especially ones that have, I don't know if you can see this, the rings themselves are solid. There is no way to open them at all. And what I mean is like, not just like stitch markers that are closed, but stitch markers that have no seam. So like they don't have anything that's gonna catch or snag on the knitting on the loop itself. Those I just love, love, love. And these are really nicely made and really nice quality. So super excited about these stitch markers. But wait, there's more. Surprise package was so big. <laughs> this is my favorite thing in here. So this is Wild Strands Handcrafted. As soon as I opened this and like touched it, you can tell that it is a really sturdy, like nice quality object. And what is it? I know you're asking. It is an interchangeable needle set. So inside looks like this. There's got lots of little, um, pockets for interchangeable needles, a big pocket for your cables, and then of course a zipper pouch and the fabric inside, I can't show it to you, but it's so cute. It says strong women lift each other up and it's just a beautiful floral print with a silhouette in there. And then of course it's got this nice leather closure and uh, I love this so much. As soon as I saw it, I thought, Okay, I have to go and see what else is on her shop. And on her shop, that she has bags that look like they're made out of this exact same material. It's like a, it's a waxed canvas, but it feels very sturdy and the leather feels very sturdy and all the fixtures feel really nice. I expected these to be so expensive. <laughs> like when I went on to her shop, I expected these were gonna be very expensive and they're not, they're really reasonably priced. And she has like big bags that are made out of these same really nice quality materials. So super excited about this i am in a little bit of a conundrum if you have watched for a while you may know that i have a little bit of add about uh interchangeable needle cases i love them and i'm constantly searching for like the perfect one and i really always want to put all of my needles into the same case together but then they get a little bit unruly and unmanageable right now i have like a whole set of these guys. This is my um, my carbon interchangeable needles are in here. And then I have like matchy matchy. All of my crochet hooks are in this one. And then this one's a little bit not as nicely folded, but these are like my fixed circulars and some of my cheaper needles. And then I also have a really nicely handmade um, circular needle roll up that was made for me. And it was, gosh, it was made probably 15 or 20 years ago for me. And it is really, I need to retire it, but I love it so much that I just can't stand to get rid of it. So I am really torn. I right now have my new set of the, uh, these guys, the Chinese needles <laughs> that I can't pronounce, Jiagu, Jiagu, um, in their original package. And, uh, well, I don't really love this pattern, the packaging is actually really nice on it. So I'm tempted to transfer these guys into this case, or I actually have um, a little bit more than called for in here. So I have these needles, but these guys here are actually the, the minis, the lace mini sets. Um, and they all fit nicely. So yeah, I'm torn. I'm not sure if this will end up being an interchangeable case for me or maybe a notions pouch or maybe my crochet hooks might go in here if they'll fit. So we shall see. But this, this is stunning. Like I'm really impressed with this thing. Of course, I'm gonna put all the links below to all of these things because I feel like I have a lot of things to link below this time. And how are you ever gonna remember them all? <laughs> I'm a little scattered today. Oh wait, there's more. <laughs> the last thing in this kit is this cute, adorable little um, knitted cuff kit. So this kit is by Laura Nelkin, who is a designer who lives in New York. And it's a little kit to make this beaded like bracelet cuff. 
It's super cute. So it comes with your pattern, which I will not show you, but there's a link to your pattern code in there. And then it comes with a little bit of yarn because this isn't a big project. Your beads. These awesome little leather um, closures. So you, you can attach them onto your cuff and attach, you know, take them on and off, which I think really makes this a cool kit. Like I'm such a sucker for nice little leather closures. And then it also comes with your own beading needle. I laugh. So this is one of those um, dental floss, like super dental things where if you have like a bridge or braces or something like that, what you can do is put your uh, floss through here and then like feed this under your bridge and it'll pull the floss through. But this is actually exactly what I use when I do any sort of beading with yarn because I'll do the same thing. So super cute kit. I think this would be an awesome stocking stuffer for maybe a new knitter or a um, maybe like a younger knitter, like a, a teenager or tweener or something like that. Uh, super cute. I really like it. I'm going to play with this a little bit because the pattern is pretty straightforward and I think I can probably zhuzh up the pattern a little bit with the beads and get a really nice um, cuff. And I'm really excited about the little leather closures. So super awesome kit. I, it was so much. I couldn't believe it. I am super excited. So all the acquisitions this week are just lovely. You know, it's hard to get into a knitting funk when you have such beautiful, inspiring things coming to your mailbox. All right. That is it for acquisitions. I have two finished objects for you. <laughs> Two finished objects and zero works in progress that I can show you. Yeah. So if you watched last episode, you know, my family kindly sent me this book with no ulterior motives in mind. This is sweaters for dogs. I don't own dogs, but my family does. Uh, I went ahead and knit not one, but two dog sweaters. So I'm super excited. Let me pick out which color to use. Which one I want to use? What do you think? That one it is. All right, so the first one I made was Ralph's Marvelous Multicolored Sweater. Let's see if I can show you this one here. If not, I'll just snap a picture and put it in. Um, this book is not in Ravelry, and I couldn't find any of the patterns in Ravelry, and I couldn't figure out how to link it to Ravelry, so that's exciting. Uh, but when I looked at this pattern, I fell in love with the yarn for it. It was this beautiful, like, slow color changing yarn and the um, pattern says to hold two strands of it together so it's a fingering weight yarn and as soon as I saw it I thought of this Japanese yarn that I have so this guy here is Wister Kaylee which I bought here at a local craft store Wister is like a Japanese big box brand although I think all of their yarn is actually made in Turkey but is Japanese brand as far as I can tell. This is an 80 gram ball. It's 73% acrylic, 24% wool, and 3% nylon. And I looked at it and I thought, oh, it's the right kind of color change, but it's kind of a boy color. Like, uh, it's kind of brown. And my mom's dog is a girl. So I also grabbed this particular monster and this is not nearly as cutely wrapped up as the other one, but this is um, some deep stash. So this is some sort of uh, mystery sock yarn that's been in my stash for probably 15 plus years. I will find the, the name of it out on my um, Ravelry stash, which I, if you guys don't know this, I'm actually pretty good at keeping up on my Ravelry project pages and stash, and I'll put all of these things in. So usually I can find my deep stash in there. But I held the two strands together and it's kind of awesome because I found two yarns that I kind of felt meh about and they created this bit of gorgeousness. 
look at how cute these two yarns knit up together. So here's the little legs and head. This I think will be folded back. This is a really cute way to show off this yarn. I um, did attempt to put one of these on my cats and it was unsuccessful. So you guys do not get modeled photos of this, at least until they reach my family back in North Carolina. Um, the, yeah, this yarn in particular kind of surprised me because it looks like this very brown yarn, but I had no idea that deep down inside of this, there were some gorgeous like reds and oranges and purples and much more deeper saturated purple colors. So this turned out gorgeous. Yeah, it's really, I'm excited this week because both of these projects were yarns that I felt kind of meant about and then held them together with other yarns I didn't really care about. And both of them turned out really, really stunning. And now I've got like the bug. I keep side eyeing my stash, trying to think about what yarns I can hold together to make cool effects. So let me show you the other yarn and you can tell me what you think. So her other dog is a lot bigger than, she's got one like little four pounder and the other one I think is eight pounds and I suspect this might be too big and I might have to re-knit it. But this guy here, this is Eddie's Robust Romp Around Sweater. And the pattern calls for you to use two different colors, but I did not. I just, um, instead of using a worsted weight, held two fingering weight yarns together. And it has just little garter ridges, and then the sort of center chest piece is uh, a two by two rib. Oh, and look at how this looks. So um, the yarns I used for this guy were also Japanese yarns. So I am holding together one skein of Olympus Make Make Sock. This is not one of them. It was actually this color, but you can see the packaging here. It's 70% wool, 30% nylon. But I held that together with this, which is a, um, <laughs> not a Japanese yarn. This is sock yarn. I'm not going to be able to pronounce this. Here y'all go. <laughs> anyway, beautiful skein of hand-painted superwash wool blend. This is a 75% superwash wool, 25% polyamide, which has been in my stash for a long time. Also, I'm pretty sure I started a project with this and then frogged it. So I'm excited to have used these and I liked the way they turned out so well that I'm probably going to also knit a hat for my mom to match so she can match both of her dogs when she wears her dog sweaters. There were a couple more things that I wanted to talk about when filming this segment that I just managed to forget. So for the pattern breakdown, first of all, we talked about the tubular cast on. So cast on recommended was none. The cast on I chose was the long tail tubular cast on, which I rearranged for two by two knitting. And I'm recommending this particular um, cast on because it is very stretchy, but it is also a really nice finish and it just makes for a really nice looking edge. For increases and decreases, this pattern calls only for a make one increase. It doesn't indicate whether this is a make one right or a make one left. I chose not to do any of the make one increases. Instead, I used a knit front back increase. And the reason I did this is because the pattern has a garter stitch edge, which is carried throughout. And the knit front back, this particular increase creates two stitches, one of which will look like a knit stitch and one will look like a purl stitch. And I wanted to point this out because where you use a knit front back stitch will oftentimes be different on each side of your knitting. Uh, especially with ribbing. So a lot of times a knit front back is a really nice increase to use uh, in that transition zone between ribbing and stockinette stitch, such as the end of a cuff or like for a sock or a hat or a sleeve or a sweater. And the reason for this is because that purl stitch, that knit front back, the second part of it, which looks like a purl stitch, will blend into the purl stitches of the row below, and it just looks really nice and finished. 
So for this pattern, they actually did a really good job of setting up your ribbing so that when you seam it together, your ribbing stays in pattern. And what I mean by that is when you sew together two pieces of flat knitting, you lose one stitch on each side of the seam. And if you're doing a knit to purl to pattern, you want to account for that so that your ribbing stays in a nice pattern once you've seamed it together. I did carry a garter stitch selvage um, up the body of both sweaters and then dropped it completely when I hit the leg hole shaping. And the reason for that is that I like a really nice edge for this leg hole shaping. And it could be a little tricky to figure out how to pick up stitches neatly in garter stitch. So I went ahead and dropped it there so that I was able to clearly see what stitches I wanted to pick up when I started picking up for the leg hole. All right, and last but not least is the bind off. This pattern does not recommend a bind off of any sort. I used a cabled bind off. The reason it's nice is that it's pretty intuitive. Once you've done a few stitches, you can really adapt it to any ribbing pattern. It doesn't have to be strictly a knit two, purl two, or knit one, purl one. And that was helpful when I hit the sections of the sweater where I had a knit three, purl two pattern going on. Guys, that is all I have for knitting. Sorry, it's been a weird, I actually feel like I knit a ton. Um, I did get these done in one weekend. It's been more than one weekend since I talked to you, but I did it in a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, both sweaters completely done. That is not normal for me. I um, was sort of marathon knitting and I will tell you why. What am I wearing this week? We'll see if you guys can tell. This is obviously not hand knit. So this is a Calvin Klein sweater that I love. It is actually not nearly cold enough out to justify it, but like I said last week, I miss my cold weather gear. Um, we did actually have our first low temperature that dropped below 70 Fahrenheit, so I'm very excited. All of the people who live local to this island are, um, you know, bundled up. They're starting to break out all of their winter sweaters and hats and coats and, and mention that it's cold outside. So I'm excited for the first hint of winter. Um, I don't normally pair knitwear with knitwear, but today I did. I am wearing this beautiful, let's see, ah, skirt. Um, this one is made out of Juniper Moon Farms and it's a cotton yarn and I will put the name of it below. This pattern was originally designed to be knit with alpaca, which would make it a lot more flowy and drapey and floofy, but I knew I was coming to hot weather, so I am wearing it in cotton. But now that it is starting to cool off, I've been thinking about re-knitting this one in some alpaca as it was designed, and I think this might be it. I have several skeins of this. Surrey alpaca, which came from one of the yarn clubs. <laughs> Here it is. Salt River Mills Surrey Accessories. So I think that's gonna be one of the next things on my needles. Anyway, um, for life in Okinawa this week, I'm not gonna do an in-depth Japan culture uh, episode. We're just gonna talk about my life and what's coming up. I am actually gonna be having shoulder surgery in a couple of weeks. I'm having a, a rotator cuff repair. Um, if you, I don't, probably you haven't noticed, but I have noticed in editing this that slowly the shoulder of mine has started to like creep up this way and not do normal things. <laughs> and of course, slowly my weight has started to, to creep back on because I hurt myself about seven months ago and have not been able to do any of the physical activities that I normally enjoy doing. So we're gonna get that repaired. Uh, I've maxed out all of the steroid injections I can have into the shoulder and my physical therapist has basically said, all right, it's time to send you over to ortho and see what they can do. So I have been knitting my brains out because I'm afraid I won't be able to knit after my surgery. Um, the surgery will be in, I think, four weeks. Um, and it's really sweet. My husband, as soon as he heard that I was going to be having surgery, he was like, you've always wanted to learn how to use a knitting belt. And so, um, I have a knitting belt and like some long double pointed needles on their way. I don't know how well I'll be able to use them in a sling, but I guess if I have 
Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with knitting belts, they're uh, a traditional accessory. I want to say they're out of like Ireland, that kind of part of the world. Um, and they're used with long double pointed needles and you actually mount the needle on the belt and that frees up because the, the needle is supported, that frees up you to use both your hands to like one hand to maneuver and one hand to one hand to maneuver the stitches and one hand to maneuver the yarn and hopefully make it faster. But I think it might also um, be able to help me knit while my arm is in a sling. We'll see. This might be wishful thinking. Um, I don't know exactly uh, what my limitations are going to be or for how long those limitations are going to be, but there's a possibility that we may have a little bit of a drought when it comes to knitting and uh, even probably life in Okinawa stuff because I bet I'm not going to want to go out and do a whole lot for a few weeks at least. So, But anyway, that'll be in December, so hopefully that will uh, line up nicely with the holiday season and it might just be a natural time to take a break in podcasting. I hear my household starting to wake up around me, so I guess I'm going to call it quits now. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Haxton Knits. Have a great day, guys. Mm -hmm.